Nothing beats living in the past. You want some proof? I got it right here, on my wrist. The Sarbi, nicknamed by none other than TGV, the ASMR King. Okay, ciao. Himself, and uh, <laughs> and I got the best Sarb in the world. Now let's go live in the past for a couple minutes. I am so happy to introduce the legendary Seiko Sarb, a cult classic fan favorite among many Seiko paths. What is a Seiko path? Well, it's someone who's obsessed with Seiko, so they're a little bit of a psychopath. And that's where that name comes from. <laughs> and as you can tell, right off the bat, I did mod this thing. I took a lot of time to consider this mod. I wanted to take away the Sarb's weaknesses and kind of bring it up to standards to modern day watches. The first change, the Sapphire Crystal. Yes, it does come with a Sapphire Crystal originally from the factory, but it does not have anti-reflective coating. So I asked Crystal Times, do they have a flat one? It wasn't on their website. They said we stopped making the OEM flat look. We only make double dome now with anti-reflective coating. I said, no, I need the flat one. They said there is a couple remaining in the European store, but they don't ship to Canada. So I got my buddy. I'm going to share his Instagram at the top. You guys should follow him if you love Seiko. He's got the best Seiko collection and he's a vintage expert. Anyway, so he picked it up for me and then shipped it over to me. And I am very thankful because having this clear anti-reflective coating, it brings the Sarb up to a new level. The clarity here is phenomenal. And I was getting pretty frustrated. It was hard to film. Like in person, the clarity is more apparent. I see it sitting on my desk. And the light is hitting it on the window and I'm like, wow, that watch, it looks good. And it's all because of that crystal. Such a small change. Don't get blue AR, make sure you get clear AR. If you are part of the lucky few who get the remaining discontinued sapphires. Now the second change. This one actually started off as a Sarb 033. That's why you can see the crystal gasket is black. The edge of that sapphire. On the original Sarb 035, you do not have that black border. The crystal gasket is clear, like a transparent ghost white look. So I'm kind of digging this black border here. It almost looks like it's putting more emphasis on the crystal. I like the look. So when I bought this watch for an overpriced amount, <laughs> it was running at about negative 45 seconds a day, 100 amplitude. It was terrible. Um, but it's eight years old and it's beat up. Okay, so these Sarbs are getting up in age. If you want to buy a used one, maybe ask if it's been serviced because that's important. Now the crown is signed, a common complaint among Seiko fans. Almost every video that doesn't have a signed crown, someone says, I wish it had a signed crown. So this one has it. It's a very grippy coin edge, six millimeter crown, push pull, giving the watch 100 meters of water resistance. Now the case shape. The case has thick yet elegant lugs that have a strong taper downwards, which really help the Sarb hug your wrist. And the signature design theme of the Sarb is that raised, stepped, brushed area, almost like an armor that travels along the case in a smooth, beautiful, curvaceous design. Love it. Now, because of these prominent lugs on the side, the Sarb may wear a little bit thicker than its size indicates. When we put it next to the all new King Seiko Rebirth, the King Seiko is actually thicker, but it wears thinner on the wrist. And it is a 37, so here they are next to each other. This King Seiko reminds me so much of the Sarb. I definitely get some Sarb vibes off the new King Seiko, but the new King Seiko is $1,700, okay? And although I'm going to give the nod to the King Seiko for the case quality, the Sarb is no slouch. And I think the Sarb's dial is done better, especially that fit and finish with the dust level. It's better on the Sarb 100%. This one is kind of unfair because I modded it. I cleaned it up. I took hours. I closed up the watch. I started filming macros. I see a spec. I open it back up and I hunt down those specs. So this one's incredibly clean. I would say not Grand Seiko level, 
definitely better than Oris, <laughs> 100%, and some Rolexes, believe it or not. But yeah, this one is very clean. I was very meticulous cleaning the underside of the sapphire before I installed it. Now, speaking of those measurements, I got 38 millimeters in diameter, secret measurement 31, with a thickness of 11.4. We got no drilled lugs for that clean look and a lug to lug of 44 millimeters. It puts you into the new Goldilocks zone for many wrists from five and a half inch to eight inch. And that's why the Sarb is so loved. It's just magic. The bracelet is aftermarket and it's a gorgeous seven link, 20 millimeters tapering down to 18, solid end links with solid links, fully milled clasp, and three micro adjusts. So it's easier to get a more comfortable fit than the original Sarb bracelet. I would say this bracelet is better than the original and it definitely elevates the Sarb. I find it extremely comfortable and I think it looks perfect on the watch. The look, fantastic. The movement is the 6R15, 50 hours of power reserve, 24 joules, hack hand wind, automatic, 21.6, VPH a low beat, but let's look at the rate. Plus nine, ignore that first number, plus four, plus five. Pretty strong amplitude with low error and the fourth and final round, plus four. Now remember this movement is freshly serviced and it has been running for about three weeks. Amplitude staying pretty consistent, doing 12 down. Beat error got worse, 0.3. But look at the rate, plus three, zero. So you know what? <laughs> Maybe the 6R can be good if your watchmaker takes it apart and puts it back together after they clean it. And look at that, yeah, you know what? One second a day, and when I wear it, I do get about one second a day on the wrist. So I'm pretty happy with its performance. Now the dial and hands. I had to switch the date wheel to white, I did a poll on the community tab showing this dial with a black date disc, asking you guys, how should I mod the Sarb? And overwhelmingly, 80% of you chose the white date disc. And I'm going to be honest, I was leaning towards the black because I was thinking from far away, these high polish applied indices look kind of black, so it might match. And I thought it looked pretty good. So I said, you know what? I'm going to ask my subs. You guys said 80%. I was still not going to go with you, but at the last minute, I decided to, and you guys were right, 100%. Thank you so much. I'm happy I went with the white date disc. It just looks so good. Now the handset. I love the handset on the Sarb. I think it goes really well with the 033. But on the 035, I find the loom looks a little cheap. It just looks a little low grade to me. So what did I do? I looked towards the Seiko family, the Persage line, and I found a pair of Persage hands that I love. They're the same ones on the King Seiko, half bead blasted, half high polish with a blued seconds hand, and all the hands have a downwards curve to them. So a little bit tricky to put on the hands because of that curve. And I did have to snip that seconds hand. So I cut the tip of the second hand because the Persage dial is larger than the Sarbs. The hour and the minute hand fit perfectly. So elegant, so beautiful. This is how the Sarb should have came in the first place. Now the price is going to vary because we're looking only at the used market now. New does not exist. So depending on condition and if it's been serviced, you're going to come in around at the time of filming December 2022, roughly around 500 USD. Yes, you can find it for less. And yes, you can find it for more. And mine was in pretty rough shape, scratched up, especially under the lugs, but I gave it a good polish and minimized it dramatically. So it looks a lot better, still looks beat up a little bit, but in a good way. Now I'm not worried about scratching it up and it just looks well worn. Now a disadvantage of the mod I did on the handset is I lost the loom, as you can see absolutely useless. You still see the loom plots on the hour markers, so definitely do not recommend this mod for most people. Seiko had such a good thing going. The Sarb line was incredible. Good quality, decent movement, priced well, 
And now that stuff kind of doesn't exist with Seiko anymore. So this thing still is sought after in the aftermarket. And I think you're going to be happy. The Slurb is definitely something special and a future classic. And guys, if you're still here, push the subscribe button and check out the videos on the right of your screen. Maybe you're not into a used watch. You only want new. So there are a couple Sarb replacements that I think are worthy on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.